Hi everyone, I am here at the Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. <coughs> what was that? Um, today we're going to be reading Matthew chapter 10, verse 24, reading through chapter 11, verse 6, you follow along? Meow. Psalm 13, and Proverbs chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. I mean a muffin. Oh, that's right. Okay. Muffin. Mm. Muffin, I mean a muffin. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Let's begin with Matthew. The student is not above the teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for students to be like their teachers and servants like their masters. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebul, how much more the members of his household? So do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground, that ground outside your father's care. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me, the Lord, God. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. After Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John was in prison, sorry, when John who was in prison heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else which I don't know why John asked his disciples to do that. That always, always makes me wonder why John did that because 
he baptized Jesus and he recognized Jesus as being the Son of God when Jesus was walking toward him. And John baptized Jesus and was right there, of course, when Jesus came up out of the water. And everybody that was there, including John, seen a dove light on Jesus' shoulder and a voice from heaven say, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And they knew that Jesus was the Son of God. So I don't understand why they would, you know, hey, are you the one to come? Or should we expect someone else? I don't know. Maybe he was just, his, maybe he was just down because he was in prison or, I don't know. Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. He don't make up a big speech to tell John's disciples. He don't say, tell him, you know, blah, 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 and this whole big old thing, you know, like the teachers of the law would. Jesus just simply said to John's disciples, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. And I'm sure they went back and told him. And that gave John more hope, I'm sure, a lot more hope as he knew. He knew, probably knowing, he probably knew what was going to happen to him. But he knew the Son of God, who was greater than he, which he knew, was there. John the Baptist was later beheaded. That's a long story we could get into, but it'd take a while. So maybe when we get to that section, I'll, we'll go into detail about that. But that'll be a while. Um, okay, so the psalm today is Psalm 13. For the director of music, a psalm of David. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? And day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer me, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my family will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. Amen. And that was Psalm 13. For the director of music, a psalm of David. Okay, let's see. Our Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 16, 17, and 18. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are pleasant ways and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. Those who hold her fast will be blessed. All right, guys, that was our Bible reading. I hope it touched your hearts. I would just like to um, ask for one prayer request tonight because it's a very important prayer request and 
it's coming up very very soon so um i would like you guys to please keep my mom um rhonda karshner in your prayers please pray hard for her um she's got something very serious wrong with her and she'll be having surgery for that it's the first step and let's pray that it goes very very well it's on um, Tuesday this Tuesday on the 18th January 18th so please please pray for her that's when the surgery is and um, let's pray if everything gets taken the way it's supposed to be taken and everything's good and clean and gone. They get it gone. And I wish we, I wish they would um, X-ray and CAT scan um, other parts as well to make sure. You know, I don't know, but it would be great if she didn't have to have the other horrible things that they want to do next. So. Please keep her in your prayers that a miracle happens and um, with this surgery it goes so well that they get it all and they don't even want her to go through that other stuff and please pray that they check her lungs and everything else and that they'll be good. So please pray for her. I, she wouldn't say it but I know she's very, very scared. Um, Please pray for her. And we've got a bad storm coming too. A bad snowstorm. So and she's also worried about that and getting there. So please keep her in your prayers. It's very, very early, you know. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. If you guys go to church tomorrow, please um, request prayer from my mom at church. Her name's Rhonda Karshner. K A R S H. M E R Rhonda Kirshner R H O N D A. Okay, I love you guys. Let's bring those souls to Jesus. Bye guys. God bless.